It's in our nature to protect the ones we love, to stand up to any danger, to be strong and courageous, to always be prepared, to keep our family safe, to be the first line of defense. We are born to protect. All right, what's up and welcome to the channel. My name is Hagshot and thank you for joining us today. I'm going to tell you the top five things to not do with your carry gun. If you've seen the video before this one, that's from the USCCA. Click that link down below. If you are a gun owner in the United States, you're thinking about becoming a carrier or you already are a law abiding carrier, they can help you out with a ton of resources to make you a more efficient carrier, give you all kinds of tools, situational awareness, videos, all types of materials to really help you out with the added benefit of liability insurance for you as a gun owner in the United States. Awesome service and check them out. And also big thanks to our patrons and your support for what you do. If you're new to the channel and you like what we do, please make sure you subscribe, like, share, all of that good stuff. Thank you so much. And let's go ahead and get started with number five. That being, do not go to pick up your new gun and carry it right out of the store. There's a couple things that you wanna do before you get to that point. One being, you want to make sure that the gun actually runs. Now, some manufacturers will say, hey, run 100 rounds first. You know, there's a break-in period. Some, this is kind of a debated thing, whether there's a break-in period, whether it's, there's not. It's always best practice with any man made anything, I don't care who it's made by, to run it. Make sure it runs with your carry ammo. You know, you might have carry ammo that runs in every single one of your guns and that one it may not work. So you want to make sure that you make sure you run the gun, put a hundred rounds to it, 200 rounds. I know it's kind of expensive right now, but it could really save your butt in the long run. So don't get that gun, get a holster right there at the shop and just start carrying right away. Another thing that I would recommend that you not do, this is my number four reason here, and again, this is all my personal opinion, you can do whatever you want, uh, but I would not do any modifications to your carry gun, especially trigger jobs. I know that people love modifying things from cars to guns to everything else, I would not do it with your carry gun. Do it on your range guns and all this kind of stuff, but not your carry gun. If you get in a situation where you have to use that gun, you know, obviously it's lawful, but any lawyer that comes up and says, oh, well you modified it. And now this trigger that was a six pound stock trigger is now a three pound trigger. And you know, they try to put that back on you when you were just making a, what seemed to be, what seemed to be a simple and innocent thing and doing a trigger job turned into a bigger thing than what it needs to be. Take that gun, learn how to shoot it in its stock configuration. To me, it just seems like it, say, it could save a ton of hassle and headache. That's just my personal opinion there. I don't do any modifications on my carry guns. Now, if you put a set of sights or something like that, that doesn't seem like a big deal. A flashlight so you can see at night, whatever the case may be, but no modifications, I would say, outside of that. Also, another thing to add on to that is any kind of springs and stuff. I know that you can get some super reliable springs to add capacity to your carry gun. To me, again, anything that could cause any kind of uh, additional uh, things against you in a court of law or whatever that, that may look like, I would stay away from that completely. All right, the number three thing I would not do with your carry gun is don't just practice at three yards. Yes, most self-defense situations happen between three and seven yards, but I would practice sometimes at 10 yards, practice at 12 yards. Just make sure that you're super efficient. Some people would say practice at 25 yards. I think that's probably a little bit too much, but stretch those boundaries a little bit. Each time you go to the range, try to get a little bit better with that gun. Try to get a little bit more efficient. Try to get a little bit quicker, you know, whatever the case may be, quicker draws, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Make sure that the gun that you shoot the best is going to be that carry gun and practice at different ranges. And also, not only that, practice with different types of ammunition. If you find that one that really works and that's, that's really efficient and that's good for you, stick with it. But if you don't, don't just think that you have to stick with this one ammo because this one person said you had to run it. Try a couple different things. Do some research on that ammo. Make sure that it's 
it's it's something that's going to be efficient and leading into that as well never carry uh full metal jackets or any kind of target ammo in a carry gun that's a bad idea to do anyways just make sure that you're carrying a good self-defense round for that gun again it can get expensive and i would even say for your break-in period you don't have to run all hollow points or whatever whatever's legal in your state you don't have to run the most expensive thing each and every time but make sure you run a mag or two at least to make sure that these things are working properly now i am not somebody to tell anybody anybody what you can do and not do which is probably kind of uh, counterintuitive considering i'm telling you five things not to do with your carry gun but one thing you should never ever ever do is be under the influence of any kind and have your firearm with you around you or anything we've seen this example happen unfortunately with uh, with fps russia and 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 all these kind and i don't know everything that happened there but it's unfortunate circumstances like that that can turn you into either a felon or an ex-gun owner really quick you have to be careful it's a, it's almost like we're held to a higher standard which it is what it is man you know don't go out drinking and and have your firearm on you be drunk i've seen videos online where cops got pulled up over by other cops and they had their gun on them and it's just a bad situation man so don't be under the influence if you're going to go out you're going to have a good time whatever the case may be just leave your gun at home man so sometimes you have to make those de the decisions uh i was even reading about states because i was just curious you know where marijuana is legal can you be a gun owner and it seems like most people say you have to give up your guns if you're even if i mean assuming that you are a, a law-abiding citizen in that state and you have it for medical purposes or whatever you cannot lawfully own a firearm eh, I don't know, man. I don't know how I feel about that at all. Again, it's one of those things you have to be very careful and just make sure whenever you have your gun on you, don't have anything else pretty much, all right? Don't be under the influence of anything else. You need to be cognitive of what's going on and, and, and what's going on around you. Again, I'm not somebody to tell you what to do at all, but you don't ever want to risk your rights as a gun owner, as, as, as stupid as you may think it is, or as I may think it is, you don't want to risk those rights, man, because they probably won't care that much about you losing your right to own a gun and protect yourself from, from a silly or stupid mistake or, or, you know, whatever the case may be. So no drugs and no guns. All right. A little bonus tip for you here. Don't ever just buy a gun because somebody said, oh, this is the latest and greatest. Everybody's hands are different. Everybody kind of adjusts differently to different types of guns. I've told so many people about, you know, this gun and that gun, and they find out that it doesn't work for them. They actually like something else. So if you can get to a range that will allow you to put each one of these guns in your hand, if you can fire them, everybody's different, man. So what may work for me, it may not work for you if you can get your hands on a lot of these and just kind of see what feels and fits good to you. And with that being said, if you're buying one for your wife or your girlfriend, don't just assume that the smallest gun or the prettiest gun is going to be the gun for them. Because most likely it's not. It's probably going to have a ton of recoil and they're going to hate it. And they're not going to want to carry this pretty or small gun that you thought was so great for them. They're probably not going to want to carry it. You might have just made them somebody that really isn't that into it because of your choice. Let them come with you. Let them kind of get their hands on them and better yet, shoot them and go with something that's actually decent for them. And then the number one thing to not do with your carry gun is don't just buy it and leave it at home. That's the whole point of you going to get a permit, of you going through all of these steps to become a gun owner and to carry the gun actually carry it don't just leave it at home don't cheap out on your holster don't cheap out on a gun belt don't don't do those things actually take the time to learn how to use that gun master that gun and actually carry it find a place or position or a holster that works for you a body type i mean you can carry your gun in so many different ways find something that's going to give you the best opportunity to carry that gun every single day don't just buy it and say oh i'm going to do all this stuff and not do it because it does take some commitment but once you do it like i said it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it totally cliche but still to this day it is so true 
So there's my top five. Actually, we did like six or seven for you right there. Things not to do with your carry gun. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are down in the comments below. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And as always, hold them down.